Good morning, everyone. Welcome to an episode of Coffee Break with Card, La Hora del Cafecito's new sister show. Coffee Break with Card is a program dedicated to all those in our community who are living with autism, to their family members, and to all those who support them. My name is Lourdes Quinones, and I would like to welcome you to the show. So come on in, join us at the table, and sign in on the comments below. Let us know if you're having coffee with us. We'd love to say hello. In today's program, we'll be talking about the rights of people with um, autism and other disabilities when they interact with the, uh, the police. This is an important, important topic. So join us. We have a lot to talk about. So let's start by introducing you to our Coffee Break hostesses for today. As I mentioned before, my name is Lourdes Quinones, and I'm part consultant assigned to the primary age group through elementary ages here at CART. And professionally, I'm a pediatric physical therapist as well as a special education teacher. I'm joined by Jasmine Castellano. Hi. She's an excellent professional in the field of mental health. She's a CAR consultant assigned to the middle and high school age groups and is the mother of three, one of whom is diagnosed with autism. Welcome, Jasmine. Thank you, Lourdes. Olivia McDonald is an excellent professional in the field of public health. She is a CAR consultant assigned to the primary, a primary age group, just like me, and is the mother of a beautiful baby infant boy whom you ju we just met recently, and he's so cute. Um, Olivia also has a younger brother diagnosed with autism. Welcome, Olivia. Good morning, Lourdes. Thank you. Miguel Dana is an excellent special education teacher, and she's also the chair of CARD's constituency board, as well as a mother of three, two of whom are diagnosed with autism. Welcome, Maggie. Thank you, Lourdes. Ima Camposano is completing her master's in social work and has chosen to do her internship here at CARD as she is committed to serving those with uh, autism in our community. Um, Ima is mother of two and has a physical disability, so she brings an important perspective to the program. Ima was um, granted an award yesterday, the Soul Award, so for all her work at CARD and serving those with um, autism and through social work and her studies. So congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. All righty. Uh, so before we get started, we would like to review the rules by which we want to hear while on the program. Um, we want to remind you to please keep an open mind, maintain a positive attitude, and use respectful language. This will ensure that we'll have a safe environment for all of us. All right, uh, Jasmine, will you read the audience or Olive, uh, Olive Olivia? <laughs> I'm doing the translation into English. <laughs> uh, would you greet the audience before we get started? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I do want to um, say good morning to Chris. Good morning, Chris. And to Lee, Adrian, and Philomena. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Okay, as I mentioned before, we'll be talking about the rights of people with autism and other disabilities when they interact with police. Ima will be answering our questions this morning and we'll be providing lots of information regarding this topic. So thank you so much to Ima for doing the, the legwork to gather this information for us. So join us. We have a lot to talk about. Let's get started. Hi, Ima. Good morning. Uh can you tell us about this policy? Yes, so Florida is in the midst of implementing the West Kleinert Fair Interview Act uh, since July 1st of 2016. This act is divided into two parts, both of which are crucial to comprehend and give possibilities that may affect people with autism spectrum disorder. We wanna make sure you make an informed choice. So the act's first portion adds a new identifier to a Florida driver's license, permit, or ID card. It is entirely up to you whether or not you choose to participate in this choice. And can you tell us, Seema, a little bit more about the, this first part of the policy? 
Yeah, so the first part states that persons with a developmental disability or their parent guard or guardian will be able to register with the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles to receive a driver's license or identification card displaying the capital D. This designation identifies the individual as having a developmental disability and a $1 fee will be levied for this designation to be added onto their ID. So persons with a developmental disability or their parent or guardian will be required to present proof of diagnosis in the form of diagnostic documentation signed by a licensed physician. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> um, you mentioned that this part is optional. What are some things for um, parents to consider and for individuals on the spectrum um, when deciding if they would like to take this option? Yes, again, this is completely optional. As we all know, we have the right to decide whether we want to disclose our disability or not. So we want to we want to stress that when you select this special designation on your driver's license or ID card, you are indicating that you or your loved one have or has a disability. The license or ID card will have a capital D imprinted on it uh, for all to see. So if the person examining your ID uh, is a predator or a devious person, this may influence their perception of you as a candidate for an application you may be submitting or may put you in a vulnerable situation. And we don't want to scare anyone or instill fear. We just want, we just think that this is an important thing to take into consideration. However, given appropriate law enforcement training, uh, the special designation may alert officers to your status as a person with ASD who may not respond in a typical way, in typical ways when confronted by law enforcement. So this will allow law enforcement officers to take appropriate steps to reduce the stress of the situation and to get the, su the supports you need. And we also want to take the time to, uh, to remind uh, you that CARD does do continuous trainings with law enforcement. And Ima, you mentioned that there were two parts to this policy. Can you talk about the second part? Yes. Um, so second, the second section of the policy deals with law enforcement. So this could be school police, public safety professionals conducting interviews with people who have ASD. Uh, this part states that at the request of the parent or guardian or in the individual themselves with a, a developmental disability, law enforcement officers, correctional officers, or another public safety or other public safety officials will make a good faith effort to ensure that specific professionals are present at all interviews of an individual diagnosed with autism or a related developmental disability. These professionals can uh, be a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a mental health counselor, a special education teacher, a clinical social worker, or any other related profession. And is there a cost involved with, with all of this? What are the requirements for the professional? Yes, yeah, so there is a payment involved. Uh, the parent or guardian or the individual themselves with autism will be responsible for the expense of hiring the professional to be there. And the professional hired must have experience in treating, teaching, or assisting patients or clients on the spectrum. And what are some of the things to consider for this policy? There are a few things I would like to keep folks uh, to for folks to keep in mind. Uh, the first is that law enforcement officials are not required to remind individuals of this option under the statute. Although law enforcement officials are not obligated to find a professional, they must make a good faith effort to do so. Uh, the presence or absence of a professional during the interrogation can't be used to defend the suspect statements also. Uh, failure to locate or have a professional uh, present during questioning is also not a reason for suppressing the statement or the substance of the interview. So for example, having the interview thrown out as evidence, uh, nor is it cause uh, of action against off the officer or agency. 
the presence of a professional does not uh, take the place of legal representation, nor does it take away a person's right to request an attorney also be present during questioning. Anything you say, even the pres even in the presence of a professional, can be used against a person to prove guilt of a crime. This is so important information, and a lot of people uh, might be blinded to the need to discuss this because they're like, "Oh, this my I I'm the parent of a child. Nothing like this is going to happen." But we want to remind people that uh, because of the autism diagnosis, there's a lot of times where other influencers such as um, sensory issues might be escalating uh, a person's behavior, your child's behavior. And we have seen even at the level of um, school, elementary, middle and high school, um, there's police interaction. There's, you know, that there is presence of the police in um, <clears throat> the schools. So being aware of this topic is important. So thinking that, oh, I don't need to talk about this with my child is not really um, something uh, that, that we really have a choice in the matter because it could happen in a, at any time. Now, we understand that having this conversation is hard, so this is the reason why we're bringing this program. And, um, and so with that in mind, I want to ask you, Ima, is there anything else that you want to add or anything that you want to highlight that it's a takeaway for us? Yes, um, I want to encourage families to identify the appropriate course of action needed to prepare their family member with ASD for this type of situation. In the event that there are that they were ever given, uh, were ever taken in for questioning by the police, whether as a witness or for engaging in an illegal activity, uh, knowing how to advocate for themselves in this type of situation is very important. The family may consider advising their loved one with autism that in a case like this, uh, a lawyer must be present uh, to ensure that their rights are respected. Um, also, an alternative to this is to teach the family member not to react uh, to queries and instead to request the presence of an attorney. And um, as I previously, uh, as I said previously, the presence of an ASD expert during questioning does not prevent law enforcement officials from asking complex questions that if answered in a certain way, may unwillingly imply that a person is guilty of a crime. So presence of an ASD expert also does not substitute for a person's right to legal counsel. Uh, for these reasons, it is important that the person with ASD know how to react and what to do in case uh, of such an event. So uh, you and, and your you or they should also have the names and contact information of the specialists selected for such purposes with them at all times, first and last name. Um, it is also good a good idea to keep this information with you, um, like right behind your license or ID card um, in your wallet or wherever you keep that information. I also wanted to share a PDF uh, I found that talks about interviewing individuals on the spectrum that could be helpful to the community. Awesome. This is great information. And again, we say, you know, we like to bring information in this show um, to alert you of things that sometimes we don't even, we're not even aware of. We, we're not even uh, thinking like that because it hasn't been our experience. But just being aware of it highlights um, the, 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 the key issues that we need to be at least in the back of our mind alerted of. So, we hope that this information is important for, uh, for you and that you're finding uh, benefit from it. So if you're watching this and you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them uh, in the bottom of in the comment section, whether you're watching this as we are live or uh, after we go off the air. We are always looking at those end, at the comments and we'll be able to answer your questions as we see. And if we can, maybe we answer those questions in a future uh, episode. So we will be sure to give you credit on the air if we make a, a future program based on your comment or question. Um, so anyway, Olivia, before we go, is are there any comments, questions, or audience members we would like to say hello to? Yes, we just want to say good, mor uh, good morning back to Anna. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate you. 
All right. Okay. So um, as we proceed before we leave, I want to make sure that we say a thank you, thank you, thank you to Ema for researching the information and for bringing this important uh, topic and information for us and for our audience. So thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. We really appreciate it. Very informative. And um, I also wanted to share that in the next episode of Coffee Break with Card, we're going to be talking about cosplay. What is cosplay? And um, we are going to be um, interviewing Dr. Beth Boone, our executive uh, director here at Card, who is a big, big, big uh, cosplay mm -hmm. fan. She and her family uh, do cosplay all the time, so she's going to be dressed up and, and everything. So you'll be sure to be here with us. It's going to be a, a special um, show because we're going to be airing it actually on Thursday, but it'll be a, uh, available on Friday for you to watch because that you know this is an important uh, event, and rather than recording it, we want to bring her live so that she can take your questions. So we'll be going live on Thursday at 10 a.m. with the interview for the cosplay, all right? So we hope that you can join us and be here. And if you're not available on Thursday, but are available on our usual time, which is Fridays around 10.45-ish, wow. uh, be sure you'll be able to click on the link of the recording and, um, and watch us and, and see Dr. Boone dressed up in her cosplay outfit, all right? So anyway, before we go, we want to ask you a little favor and that uh, please click on the link that we're going to be adding to the comments section. It's a survey about our services, how we're doing. If this programming is something that you find value in, something that um, you want us to keep in the air, remember this is the way that we can justify the time that it takes us to create this type of programming and to uh, be in the air with you. So thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for doing this, whether you've done it before, every time we go in the air, we still need a new evaluation. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This is how we keep our card programming um, going. All right. So thank you. And this brings us to the end of the program, but we didn't want to leave with that. First of all, asking you to please give us a like to share our video with those of, um, uh, friends and family members that, you know, will benefit, uh, from this type of information and be sure to meet us here every Friday at 10 45, but next week also, we're going to be here at 10 AM on Thursday. So be sure to join us with a, uh, with your cup of coffee, we'll love to spill the beans about uh, the important topic of cosplay next week. All right. So until then, we want to wish you good vibes and hot coffee. coffee. <laughs> next week, have a great weekend.